Welcome back to Bedtime with Cousin Vinny. I am a nationally critically acclaimed Christian author uh, of the Devil's Glove, Cousin Vinny Agnello, and uh, we've been doing one of the great teases in, uh, in book history, I think. I've been reading about, uh, we've been reading about 185 pages by the time we're through of the Devil's Glove in 15 minute segments. And uh, last time I left you guys off, I left you off on page 140. Now, quick, quick uh, information thing here. Uh, in the back there, you can see a phone number. That's how you get a hold of me if you'd like to get a discounted copy of this critically acclaimed national book with all these wonderful blurbs. This is the second edition. And you can also see the email address to get more information. Uh, we're, we have a very value price and you'll be very happy. It'll be signed, autographed, and the whole nine yards. All right. Well, back to The Devil's Glove, second edition, page 140. And um, right now we're in a chapter. Let me see. Where we're in a chapter called A Rebellion in Heaven. And let's get started. Uh, how about I make you? How about I make a deal with you? If I'm able to strike this kid out, let's say ten times in a row, then I earn my wings and get to leave this wretched place. How's that sound? I'm afraid it doesn't work like that, Sicotti. You're here for good, buddy. This is just a small vacation for you. I mean, if you've got a problem with that, we could always send you back to where you came from and find somebody else. No, 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 that won't be necessary. Come to think about it, it seems like a really, really nice place to pitch. No, 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 I, I, I'm in no hurry to go back. You're the boss, you tell me what you want from me, Eddie Sicotti said in a panicked tone of voice. We want you to throw the, um, we want you to throw the kid meatballs, but we're mainly interested in the overall speed of the pitch. We want you to throw as close to 90 miles per hour as you can. We're only interested in velocity. Understand, Eddie? Gotcha. Fast ball, fast meatballs you want, fast meatballs you get. Just like the Reds got. I was really serving up during that series. There were no junk balls being thrown during the first two games I pitched. That I guarantee you, Eddie Sicotti said proudly. Coach shook his head in disbelief. After listening to the diatribe of the manager's personal circus act, Eddie Sicotti made his way to the pitching rubber. A young man dressed as a ball boy ran out of the dugout carrying a catcher's mitt and handed it over to the coach. The coach put on the catcher's mitt and squatted down behind the plate to receive Eddie Sicotti's warm-up tosses. Sicotti might not have thrown the ball 90 miles per hour, but he threw it fast enough to put a good stinging on the coach's hands. The coach knew that the ball was coming in fast enough to test little Eddie's courage and bat speed. After about 10, up, 10 warm up tosses, the coach instructed young Romano to step up to the plate, but the kid was too mesmerized by the presence of Eddie Sicotti to hear the instruction. My little man, step into the batter's box, the coach repeated. Eddie broke out of his trance momentarily, saying, that's really Eddie Sicotti. Can you believe it? This is just incredible. It's like I've stepped back in time. I can't believe my eyes, coach. Well, believe him, the coach said with levity, brushing off the boy's concerns as if they were unfounded. Now listen, Eddie. Relax. Concentrate on the baseball. Focus in on the trajectory of the incoming ball. Remember, with a major league fastball, all your decisions have to be made quicker than before. If you hesitate for a moment, I guarantee you that the ball will be by you. The moment the ball leaves his hand, you have to know whether you're going to swing or not. If it looks like the ball's trajectory will make it a strike, then swing. You have to make this decision almost immediately. You understand? Gotcha, coach. Coach waved as Eddie Sicotti waved at Eddie Sicotti to get his attention. Sicotti, remember, meatballs only, the coach ordered. Sicotti began his wind-up and fired a fastball, letter high toward the center of the plate, 
Eddie's eyes became dilated and filled with fear as the speeding ball approached. With the fear of God in those eyes, he dove away from the batter's box just as the pitch crossed the plate dead center. What are you doing, Eddie? That was a strike, the coach blared out. Eddie got back onto his feet and dusted himself off. I'm sorry, I was scared it was going to hit me. Eddie, you got to be brave, my little man. That ball was straight as an arrow. It was nowhere near inside. What are you going to do when you have to face a curveball and it looks like it's going to hit you until the very last second when it breaks across the plate? I don't know. Maybe I'm not cut out to be a major leaguer after all. I thought the magic of the glove was supposed to take care of all that. You have to believe in yourself and the magic, Eddie. Trying to become a major league baseball player is no easy chore. It takes hard work and dedication, including the bravery to stand up to a real fastball. Now I know that you have that kind of bravery. It's the same kind of bravery that you need to give a beating to those bullies at your school. And if you got that kind of bravery, then you can stand up to these fastballs, can't you? You bet I can. It completely slipped my mind that that's really Eddie Sicotti on that mound. He's a real pro, and he's got good control. There's no way he's going to hit me, Eddie rationalized in an effort to convince himself. Now you're talking, kid. So just stand in there. All I want from you right now is just to stand in that batter's box and get used to having that fastball cruising by you. So you just rest that bat on your shoulders for the time being and relax. No problem, coach. Sometimes I feel a bit stupid. I mean, I, I shouldn't have been a, a dunderhead in the first place. I should have known that Sakati's a real pro and not some wild throwing high school pitcher. It's embarrassing that I bailed out the way I did. It's okay, Eddie. Everybody forgets where they are occasionally. Believe me, I try to do it all the time. Well, we'll just chalk it up to a temporary mind lapse, the coach said with a nervous laugh and an underlying bitterness. Eddie stepped back into the batter's box and fidgeted until his feet were set. He then nervously rocked his bat back and forth in a rhythmic manner as he awaited the ensuing pitch. He watched Sakati fiddle with a rosin bag before stepping on the rubber. Although he tried his best to act nonchalant, the sight of Sakati on the mound in the flesh was simply overwhelming to him. His mind's amazement that this incredible event was actually taking place stunned him physically to the point that he had to step out of the batter's box and feel the pain of his own pinch to realize that this was all too real. He had an overwhelming compulsion to speak out about this amazing event. Coach, forgive me, but I really feel like I'm at bat against a ghost. I'm just having the hardest time believing that I'm actually up to bat against Eddie Sicotti. I don't know for sure, but Eddie Sicotti's got to be dead. If he's not, he's an awfully old man. I just can't fathom how he could look so young for one so ancient. There's some kind of trickery going on around here. If this is really true, then somebody's not telling me the whole story. Coach, where am I? The dream coach signaled to Sakati to take a break before attempting to soothe Eddie's apprehensions. Eddie, we gotta talk, my boy. The dream coach stated affectionately, placing his arm around the boy's shoulders. Eddie, this is a place where dreams come true. People who are sent here never age. In fact, we're all given a choice to be any age we wish. Obviously, Mr. Sakati would do you no good if he was pitching to you at over a hundred years old. So Mr. Sakati chose to be his playing age. Believe me, 
that is Eddie Sacati out on that pitcher's rubber. So then you lied to me after all. You are dead, aren't you? Eddie, you're only as dead as you feel. I certainly don't feel dead, so obviously I'm not dead. That's very funny. Go ahead, continue to play these mind games with me, but I think I'm starting to get it now. This has got to be the afterworld, the place where people go after they're dead. So, so there really is a life after death? Wow. That's incredible. The only thing that doesn't make any sense to me is, why am I here? I really haven't understood that from the beginning. I know I'm not dead, so I can't quite figure out why I've been given this great privilege. I'm probably the only living person in the world who definitely knows that there is life after death. Yeah, that's probably true, my boy. The dark man quickly exited the dugout after hearing too much of Eddie's conjecture. He raced toward the batter's box where Eddie and the coach stood conversing. I think it's about time that we tell you the truth, Eddie, the manager said, lying with a poker face. As you've already guessed from your remarks, this is the afterworld, Eddie. In fact, I'm very proud to inform you that this is the heaven that you've read so much about. And best of all, we're all angels here, aren't we, coach? Yeah, Eddie, we're all angels. We're angels, all right, the coach mumbled in disgust. I figured it had to be something like that. So uh, Eddie Sicotti out there, he's an angel too, huh? Sure, of course he is, agreed the dream coach condescendingly. And you, coach, are you an angel too? Yes, indeed, Eddie. I'm a special angel. I'm in the same boat that you're in. I, I got here by accident, just like you did. But unlike you, I haven't figured out how to leave this place yet. The manager says that prophecy foretells that I'll be leaving this place someday. I don't get it. Why would you want to leave heaven? Eddie asked in amazement. What a dumb question to ask me. I hate to reiterate the obvious, but I'm alive. I don't belong here yet. How would you like to be stuck here if you were alive? I, I, I am alive, but I understand what you're driving at. So why can't you find your way out, you know, like I do? Don't you think I'd give my bottom dollar to find that door? You are so lucky. You go back and forth and I'm stuck here. It's just not fair, the coach complained. The manager was busy eavesdropping like usual and couldn't wait to add his two cents. Quit complaining. What more could you possibly want? You're literally surrounded by angels. Like the boy says, you're in heaven. What more could you possibly have been given to you? And if you ask me, this whole situation that you've been blessed with is much better than what you really deserve, the manager interjected. You two fight like cats and dogs. And if you're all angels like you say you are, then how come I never get the feeling that you guys and the babe and Garrig are on the same team? Don't believe the hype, Eddie the manager announced abruptly. Heaven isn't such a perfect place, and angels don't always agree. There's a dispute going on in heaven between differing factions of angels on how you, my little man, should live your life. Our competing faction believes that everything is either black or white. Now you know that isn't true, Eddie. You know full well that there are gray and other colors. Our faction of angels knows that too. We also know that behavior in general can't be so simplistically categorized. 
We realize that all these conflicting messages you've been receiving must be confusing to you. And that's why we're offering you a choice. Of course, by following our way of doing things, you receive an incentive. A magic glove. Tell me, Eddie, wouldn't the kids at school give their right arms for a magic glove that would give them the ability to become professional baseball stars? Wouldn't they? The manager asked excitedly. Yeah, I, I guess they would, Eddie admitted, but he was still overwhelmed by the manager's revelation. But hell, we're not asking you for to give up to for you to give up your right arm. We know you'll need that to play with.